Here we are again. Welcome to Arizona Real Estate News with Pat McMaster's Price Mortgage and Jackie and Roby with Century 21 Arizona Foothills. <laughs> Greetings, everybody. Hello, hello. We're going to crunch through the numbers today, but the exciting part is this is the day that we have the drawing to win the coveted Real Estate News mug and the very rare and prize award-winning Price Mortgage hats. I thought maybe you thought I thought you said the exciting news was I was back in the saddle. <laughs> well, we not. did miss you last week and okay. uh, we cut out all the parts where we talked about you. So um, cool. you know, I, there was so much editing I had to do. So but but welcome back. And it uh, looks like you got some sun, got a little golfing going on out there. And you are leaving tomorrow today and you're going to Detroit and you're going to be meeting with United Wholesale Lending. Is that who it is? Yeah, they're uh, they're actually the equivalent to Quicken in terms of the wholesale. They're one of the biggest wholesale lenders out there. So they're talking about <clears throat> we're one a pretty good size office for them, volume wise. So they're we got about thirty five to forty people going out there just to do some training and um, meet with the CEO Matt Ishbia. You've probably seen him on CNN. He's not been on uh, Money and MSNBC. He's a pretty well spoken guy, but uh, we're gonna meet with him and. Get some insight too. So it'll be interesting. Okay. I might... See if you see if you can get them on our show. <clears throat> yep, I will. Sounds good. So. Well, I'm gonna crunch through some of these numbers here real quick. And this morning, guess what? 18,600 homes again Same. are on the market, active listings. And uh, it's been that way. This is week four. Now it used to be that on Monday and Tuesday, that number would always drop between four and six hundred homes. It's not dropping like that anymore. It's maybe a hundred and a half. Which kind of tells you, doesn't it, that the weekends are a little weak because mm -hmm. um, there aren't that many going under contract. I changed the contract to a yellow line maybe to try and make it stand out a little bit more. But sales went up just a tick. But what's interesting was the number of new listings that came on um, declined yet again at their lowest level since uh, February. Only the this difference was when the new listings came on in February we had more contracts. So the line was inverted. Yeah. So we, we were selling more than what was, was coming on. So they were getting more than absorbed. And it's nationwide. I mean, it's like yeah. literally running even. I was watching it yesterday and it was almost exact what came on and what went off. Yeah, none of this is unique to Arizona. That's for sure. Um, we've got, I want to click through some interesting numbers that I pulled up this morning and tell you what I'm what I'm seeing. and. May make sense, may not make sense, but I'm looking at the average list price per square foot. Now, if you've priced your home at April pricing, you don't stand a chance at all of selling it. I mean, that's that was the peak. And you can see that's where our average list price was here. Week 23, week 15, or week 13, week 15. So if you've priced at April... Right now, we're down to 2021 20, pricing already, according to the list pricing, not the average sales price, because that lags at least a month. But you can see that the prices are being adjusted. Now, this is the average list price per square foot. And I realize that open door is having effect on some of our metrics, but I don't think they're skewing the average price per square foot as much as we think they might. They have 2,000 homes that they grossly overpriced. I think they're finally bringing them down at par with everybody else. And the reason I point that out is now they're affecting our price changes greatly. If you look at the price change chart, a third of those price changes are open door and offer pad. Yeah. But take a look at this. This is sales per month in Phoenix. Okay. See how it's gone down. And that's why the list price is going down. And then you get to like Fountain Hills. It's gone down. But then if I start looking at the over 55 communities and I pull up Sun City, it actually popped up slightly, 92 homes. But then Sun City West went down, um, way down. And then Sun Lakes went down. So the over 55 communities kind of mirroring everybody else when it comes to average sales per month. But here's the real weird thing. Um, their listing success rate in over 55, this is a busy chart, but wow. we're sitting at 85%. But what I'm seeing on the listings here, see how the price 
This is the average list price. Let me just put in the over 55 communities and then kind of pose this as a question to you. Sun City, Sun City West, and Sun Lakes. Why isn't their average list price dropping? No eye buyers. No eye buyers, but I don't think they skew that data that much. Yeah, I think well, they're just holding on. I mean, and here's why I say this. They're, they're buying a house for five eighty five. They're marking it up to six hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Then they mark it back down to five eighty five. Mm -hmm. That really hasn't messed with the average price. I'm wondering if this is in the over fifty five communities. A lot of the sellers are out of state. Maybe. Um, oh, absolutely. A certain percentage of the homes being sold are uh, sold because maybe the owner went into assisted living and now you've got the the kids managing the property. So it's pricing by committee. Uh -huh. uh, but right. There's something, something going on there that, you know, you get back here and most of them are still stuck on April pricing. And well, but I also think Rick, when, it, whenever we've had big changes in the market, even, even when everything went, you know, insane, the 55 plus communities don't seem to be affected. And I don't think this is an anomaly. I don't think it's just now because even when we had the crash, it, it took a lot longer for Sun City to have any effect on prices. It just kind of muddled along. I remember back then because I was selling a lot of properties in there and it it's always seemed to just do its own thing and just kind of stay stable. And it, well, I've never seen it that much affected up but or down. Their sales per month are down. Yeah, well, of course they are. But um, is that seasonal too? Well, they were down, they're down compared to last year and, and be compared to the year before. So, so they're, you know, they're trending down versus the past two years. Right. Um, I think so, there's, I, I think stock market has a lot to do with that. Uh, there's a lot of cash always in the 55 plus. They don't want to take on debt. And so I think the stock market also has a little bit of an effect on that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at that and thinking that, um, there's not as much price reduction going on there as what probably should be happening mm -hmm. in a market like that. So sales are down and uh, they're kind of out of skew with the rest of, of the market. So Pat, kind of a busy uh, <clears throat> rate week. <clears throat> well, I'm what kind happened? of nervous. I feel like I've, I get back in the saddle here and get my uh, radio voice on here. <laughs> but uh, no yeah, it's, it's been... Um, <laughs> Let me just uh, do that uh, thing that you said I could do with the screen. Control plus. There you go. Yeah. Learn everything from you. So <laughs> here we go. Um, yeah. Today, I mean, the 10 uh, year <laughs> treasury is the 310. Scroll um, down just a hair. Yep. There we go. And uh, this is this is actually rates. I always look at price, but these are the rates. So, um, you know, there's obviously the yields are poking around to see the uh we got 310 they're saying that the um i was reading habib barry habib today and talking about uh you know there's some downside more uh, or upside to rates moving up because obviously we've got the feds meeting september 20th and 21st um so we've got about three and a half weeks here um this is kind of interesting here this is the time this is rates going down right this is July, June 14th. They're going down, went up a little bit, kind of based out here, and then they went down again. But people always remember when uh, the average person says, calls you and says, oh, I see rates went up. The feds raised the rate. This is the day that uh, the feds met, and you saw them go down further. And they're going down prior to that meeting, right? Now, obviously, we caught a trend upward where the last – three and a half weeks have been, it's been kind of a putting pins in your eyes, uh, death by a thousand cuts here the last three weeks with rates. I mean, obviously we're going to probably see them push a little higher, but they're saying that the feds will probably bump up, obviously the um, fed fund rate, another three quarters of a point. So yeah, I think you're going to see a push upwards a little bit more in rates, but I'm also seeing anecdotal evidence that uh, once that happens, you know, they're going to come start coming back down again. I mean, um, you know, I really think that the market is obviously trying to price in this bigger, you know, Fed rate hike, uh, before the meeting, 
and you're going to see this probably push. We're getting some, you know, we're seeing three, uh, I think it was 325 is when, you know, 3.25 is what we saw the 10 year um, kind of hit a, a ceiling. So the next three weeks are going to be a little choppy for rates and, um, you know, keep an eye on it. But I think um, once again, you know, I, I think uh, you look at the data, you look at the trends and you look at the psychology, but I think um, overall, I think, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but don't you think that the economy, just everything feels, this is just like my thought of the day. It just seems everybody's kind of going through this, getting to this tired phase. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think, and I also think your chart shows really what goes on with interest rates, that the, the, the moves come in anticipation of a move by the Fed, not the actual move yeah. by the Fed. Yeah, and I think, once again, I remember I told you a couple, this is back several months ago, I started looking at the charts, and it just seems like people look at the markets day-to-day, week-by-week, but once again, remember I was talking about months ago about how I'm starting to segment the market out six to 12 to 18 months segments mm-hmm. versus looking at it from day to day or week by week because they're month by month. But, you know, prior to January, remember, I know our beginning uh, podcast, I said this would be a choppy year. I just felt there was going to be a choppy year because last year was just kind of smoothing along, going along, but we're seeing a lot of choppiness. So we've had eight months of choppiness. Maybe it's another six months of choppiness you know yeah i agree ladies what are you what are you seeing i know that my calls have increased the past week what about you yeah we're definitely getting more um showing requests and getting a lot more activity on our properties yeah why do you think that is what i mean was that because rates went down to 5.1 for a period and is that going to slow down this week well as far as i for me i believe um just the people going back to school and kind of getting back into the normal routine. The kids are back in school, vacations are done. Um, People are just kind of seeing that things are kind of trending a little bit like the same. So maybe they're not, um, maybe they're not in a panic mode and they're just kind of getting back to normalcy and seeing correct. Seeing a lot more open house signs out there than I ever did. Getting some more traffic at the open houses too. We've got quite a few that we've had agents holding open for us. And surprisingly, that traffic's picking up. The calls are picking up. Showing requests are starting to pick up. I, I don't know if people are finally getting it that we're maybe we're not crashing. I I, I think we're just gonna kind of muddle along and you know, there's life events. I think Ruby's right too. You know, everybody's back in school and it typically things kind of pick up every year a little bit. We get that little surge leading up to the holidays. And I mean, I don't think we're going to have a huge surge, but I I think it's maybe people are getting a little. The other thing I'm seeing too, Jackie is, is nobody's writing an asking price offer anymore. I mean, they're nobody buyers. are like, I mean, I don't, if you were 600,000, you went to 500,000. They're still coming in, going to come in and write it for 470. I mean, Absolutely. If you and went down to 470, they'd write it for 450. They they're just looking at that asking price and going, nope. Right. Mm-hmm. And this this is why I'm telling people right now, I think it's a good time to buy. Even with our sellers, I had a conversation with some clients yesterday. They've got a horse property out in Whitman. And I told them, you know, on that one, we're not getting that much traction. And I said, you know, we need to consider our price reduction. But what I want to prepare you for is if we go to 475, there is a high likelihood, 90% plus, that our offer is going to come in lower. So I want you to I want you to expect that. Don't think, okay, we're going to go to 475 and that's what we're going to sell it for. You're going to probably see an offer 20, 30,000 below. And the buyers have that in their head now. They think they mm-hmm. have control. And that's why I keep telling people this and and the word's getting out there to the sellers. The agents yep. are letting the sellers know they're starting to educate them don't expect a full price offer expect concessions expect these things and that's why i still think you know we're muddling on those ceiling uh the the listing ceiling i think we're going to start as we get further closer to the holidays we're going to start coming down in inventory just like we do every single year and so buyers have choices they've got leverage it you know if you can afford it and it's right for you i think it's a great time 
Well, right. Open Door has a 17 month supply of listings. It's a staggering amount. <laughs> and and we, we had one that they were asking 595, I think, for it. Um, or was it 595? And uh, I'm, I'm probably spitting the numbers out wrong until I go take a look at it again. But anyway, they we sent them a pretty low offer. And uh, they came back and reduced their price by 11000 They had already dropped it 100 k <clears throat> yeah, Then they dropped it 50 k And then we went even lower. And uh, we knew they wouldn't take it. But they came back 11000 So it took us three and a half days. But we got them down from their asking price uh, mm -hmm. down thirty thousand dollars. Yeah, and so I, was I had a guy. Yeah, I had a, a gentleman I was talking to, an old client that called me, and bought a house in Maricopa. So he goes, he called, did his loan it last year. He goes, hey, I want to. I'm looking at this other house in Maricopa. He goes, I want to sell mine, but uh, Open Door had it five seventy or five seventy five. He goes, I there's no way it's been sitting for sixty days. He goes. They're going to drop it again, and I think they're going to. He said they're going to drop it to about five fifteen. He, you know, that's. I don't know. I guess he's got some information. Uh, but he goes, I'll offer him maybe four ninety. He goes, I, I have well, a feeling I might get it. I spoke with the with the gal at Open Door, and she said they're getting flooded with offers, and I, I just think people are just lowballing like crazy. I said, oh, yeah. are you lowballing you? And she wouldn't say, mm -hmm. but she said we're just really busy. They're flooding us with offers, and. Uh, and so they still have that $3,500 agent bonus if you close before September 30th. So my client is taking advantage of that. So I'm going to credit that agent bonus to their closing costs. And uh, he's getting in on a, uh, on a doctor loan. So it's going to be really good for him. So if anybody is interested in, in uh, taking advantage of that open door thing, really, it's like you only got a couple weeks left. Yeah. And, uh, or that right. goes away, but you know, reach out to us at the email below because we'll we'll just credit that bonus back to you instead of absolutely you know, instead of buying Pat a Christmas gift. So, <laughs> but hey, I, I'm, I'm still gonna expect one. Don't worry. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of that, um, it's time. It is time oh, for us to to uh, take a look and see who's going to be our big winner. If you commented and liked on the video that we did last week, then here we go. We put the URL in the video there and we pick random comment and it'll show up and you're a winner. Now, if you're a winner, trust me when I tell you, we have no idea where you live. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we can't mail you the mug. Now I can send Pat out in the car and he could drive around and try to find you, but <laughs> if you live in West Virginia, you'll never see that mug. So the best way to get around that is to send us an email down below your easy news at gmail.com. So, so we need to, uh, I, I need to write this down here as we get these <laughs> winning names. And uh, so we can poke you and remind you every time we have a video. So are you ready? Here comes. I'm ready. <laughs> Where's the drum roll? Our winner is Eric Weber. Yay, Eric. And what did he say? What, what was his comment? Instead of being paid to irrigate their own farms, they should, uh, like they should, the government's paying farms. So he's talking about water. So, because we had made some comments on water, but Eric, you have won a mug. We're going to give away two more mugs. We're going to give away the coveted and rare hat, <laughs> price mortgage hat. It's a, it's a great and a black version. Yeah, I mean, well, you're yeah. doing two hats. Yeah, I stepped it up. I'm stepping Whoa. it up. I to the owner. Yeah, <laughs> can can you feel the excitement? I don't know. It just does. <laughs> now we have another one here, and we go, Cato Kane. Yay, Cato. Cato. You won a mug and, and uh, take it to work with you. And uh, excellent non biased <laughs> content as always. Thanks for your channel. Thanks for watching. We're going to do another one. Last mug here. Xiong Dong Hong, please listen to your show while driving. Ruby's voice volume is way louder than any other speakers. All right. So <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, well, we don't mind people telling us things that that we're doing on here that uh, wrong. Know, I mean, I don't go back and listen to these on my phone and, and see, you know, how it, how it works out, but uh, we might get a long too. list now, Rick, be careful what you say. I know. Well, that's okay. <laughs> you know, tell, tell us, tell us what you like and don't like. That's the whole thing. Now 
Right, this is, I don't I don't even know how to have a drum roll for this, but this is for the first uh, price mortgage hat. And uh, we're going to get this one right here. Let me line some things up for us. Pick the random hat. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. you're going to laugh about this. This is my best friend of 50 years. Oh, right. yeah. This right. Yeah. This is the. Uh... Well, congratulations, John. And look at his And so you do know where he lives. It's, I know. Yeah, John, you don't have to send me your address. I'll probably deliver the hat. He Did is he a have a little pull on this for that Covenant hat? Yeah, he's he's a pathologist down in El Paso, Texas. And uh, he says, calling in 50 years of friendship, I expect to win ah. that mug. You didn't get the mug, John. You got oh, the hat. So. Well, he'll have to try it. next time. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> I'm going to laugh about that all day. Um, I've known him <laughs> since seventh grade. So. Pick a random comment. One more hat. Ready? J.B. Brown. And right. J.B. comment. Congratulations. Simply A. Well, <laughs> there you go. I'll tell you what. Comments big, too big or too small. Yes. Uh, you just have to, you don't, you know, you don't have to really say anything. So we'll do this again. Um, yep. And uh, we'll have more fun with it. But I appreciate everybody participating now. Don't forget. With the exception of John, uh, we don't know where you live. We don't know where to mail the mugs or the hats. So please, please reach out to us at the email that you see below so that we can get these coveted prizes out to you. Other than that, are you going to post the winners? What's that? Rick, are you going to post the winners? The winners? I am. I'm going to post them in the community tab and I'll post them out there this morning. And uh, Pat, you have a safe trip. See yep. if you can snag that. Uh, that, that big shot, and uh, we'll see if we can get that interview maybe this week. So, all righty, sounds Ladies, good. Have a good Bye. rest of the week. Bye. Have a good one.